The pressure is building against Julian Assange, the founder of the whistleblower website WikiLeaks. The international police organization Interpol has issued a global warrant for his arrest for alleged sex crimes committed in Sweden earlier this year. And the U.S. government is still counting the cost of thousands of confidential U.S. cables posted by WikiLeaks earlier this week, many containing candid views of American diplomats on world leaders. Richard Bronowski is an adjunct professor at Sydney University and a former Australian diplomat. He joins me now in the studio. Good to see you. Thanks for coming Thanks, in. Thanks, So, Richard Bronowski, Julian Assange is now a wanted man. Is this the start of the authorities' bid to silence him? Could well be, Ros, but um, they're arresting him for alleged rape. That's got a long way... That's a big stretch from releasing or, or letting out into the public um, classified documents. And in that case, if, if they want to get him for that, I can't see on what grounds. Is there terrorist laws that, that allow... Uh, the arrest of someone who's been given or has uh, achieved material but hasn't signed any sort of confidentiality agreement. I I think it's shooting the messenger, quite frankly, if it's going to lead to that. So how should Julian Assange and indeed WikiLeaks be handled? Be? Handled. Handled. Well, certainly if I'd I'd want to talk to him and if he wanted to talk and find out... I'd be very curious about his motives in doing what he's done. I mean, we, we know something about his background, but apart from that, you know, I'm all for freedom of information, and I think a lot of the information that has come out of these these cables so far hasn't really put anyone's life in danger. It, it talks about what envoys, what ambassadors, what diplomats think frankly about the people to which they're accredited, governments, officials, that sort of thing. It also talks about people like the king of Saudi Arabia saying we have to cut off the head of this, the Persian snake and that's an embarrassment because of course that, that goes along with Israel and the Saudis don't want to be in, in the same camp but quite frankly it's uh, what I've read so far brings out a rather refreshing element of, um, of novelty about people like Berlusconi and Putin and Medvedev and other leaders and I think it's, it's a, an educational uh, thing that's happening and people will be more enlightened than they have been in the past about the arcane nature of international nuclear, uh, international diplomacy. Will this, though, necessarily change the way countries uh, communicate internally and with yeah. each other? Will we have to go back a few steps? I think it will. I was putting myself back in harness as an ambassador somewhere and thinking, what could I really say about um, the Prime Minister of the country to which I'm accredited, knowing that he's not very good, you know, help a client. Is it going to be picked up by the people to which I'm accredited? And I guess, in a sense, this is the end of the electronic era. We can't any longer expect that this is going to be confidential. We might have to go back to the horse and buggy age of the one-time pad and to the courier, the, the diplomatic courier taking the bag with a padlock from post to post with, with hard copy of, of uh, cables back to Canberra. Richard Bronowski, good to see you. Thank you. Thank you, Ross.